Good afternoon, and welcome to Prescott Talks, presented by Prescott E! News. I'm Dwight Kadar, and this afternoon we'll be interviewing Jana Kading. Let me give you a little bit of uh, about who I am. I've been uh, involved with the Arizona uh, Republican Party through Yavapai County uh, Committee for the last uh, 10 years. I'm a PC, eight years as a state committee man, and two years ago I was elected as the CD1 member at large and part of the executive committee. This afternoon, we'll be in introducing to you to Jana and interviewing her about her candidacy to be chair of the Yavapai County Republican Committee. Jana, would you give us a few minutes about yourself, please, before we move into our questions? Sure. I, I am an 18-year Arizona resident, um, but prior to that, I've lived in a great number of states. I consider myself a survivor and got out of Minnesota. Um, and came to Arizona, raised our kids in the valley, and we've been up here in Prescott, and we chose it for the climate, the political climate, and the great climate. And um, so both my kids are grown and out, and I've been here just loving Yavapai County and so thankful to be here. So. Good. Well, thanks. Uh, let's first talk about uh, the, the, you, the vision you have for the Republican Party here in Yavapai County. Uh, I think, as most of the, the listeners know, uh, this county is extremely conservative uh, and and also has one of the highest turnouts uh, every cycle. In fact, surprisingly enough, we had a 75 percent turnout in this county of registered voters for our last election, which uh, topped the state uh, the uh, state numbers. The question I have for you is, Let's talk specifically about the party and what your vision is for our county party here in Yavapai and specifically for Legislative District 1, which for all intents and purposes represents the entire county. Yes. Well, I think that the number one thing that Yavapai County should be focusing on and what I will focus on as county chair is the one thing we need to do is elect Republicans to office. And what we have found is that uh, simple majority is not good enough anymore. We need super majorities. That's veto proof majorities. So that's the one thing. And then the next thing that I need to do is to mobilize all of the grassroots. That's the precinct committee men, the PCs like you and I are. We got to mobilize all of those people to make that happen, to get those Republicans elected. And it's not just in state Senate, state Congress, it's school boards, it's board of supervisors, it's hospital boards. It's all of those, every government body, every regulatory body, that should be our goal. Yeah. In fact, it's interesting because we've just had, I, I live in Sedona, uh, and we just had our uh, uh, citywide mayor's race. And while that it is nonpartisan, it's clear when you start talking to people what side of the fence they're on. So I think the, one of the other things we probably should be looking at is things like these nonpartisans, but yet mm -hmm. try to get good conservatives and fiscally responsible people. Fire boards, as a, for instance, here in yes. rural Arizona, we have a lot of fire boards um, and our, as well as our school boards and our city councils. So yes, all and of those. One of the things that I, I would like to do is to have what I'm calling a mini committee or an action committee. And each one of those government entities needs to have a group of people watching them like a hawk. Um, go to every meeting report back so we know what they're doing. Um, and there's lots of opportunities for people to get involved in doing that. And I think that's the best thing we can do is America first, but start local. We start here, right in our yeah. own backyard. Well, as they say, all elections are local. Yes. And you're, no, you're, <laughs> and you're absolutely right. And I think a lot of people, when they become PCs or become active, they're always looking for something to do, and uh, it isn't always about knocking doors or phone banking and all. Mm -hmm. There are other areas, and I think that's that's something I'm I'm anxious for you to explore. Yeah, well, the mobilizing. I think um, I recently read a book called Citizen Ninja. I met the author last week, and she's great. And I, and um, I want to implement a lot of those ideas. Um, but it's finding the ways that you can be that warrior out there for your backyard. Um, you know, maybe it is phone calling, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's hosting, you know, six person barbecues in your backyard, or there's all kinds of different levels of things that we can do. It doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional ones. So yeah. 
It should be coming from the bottom up. It should not be me up there saying, this is what we're going to do. It should be everybody saying, hey, I think we could do this or let's try that or let's do that yeah. because that's when the best ideas happen. One of the things I think we, we've seen uh, over the years we've been involved here in Yavapai County is there's a there's a core group of of people that that come to meetings that are that are quote engaged, and the question is in my mind, how do we get those people in uh, to reach out to their orbit of friends and neighbors and so forth? Uh, it doesn't do us a lot of good to expand the the uh, party if we if we continually talk to the same group of people. And right. So how do, how do you see us being able to expand our reach to say moderates or independents or even even conservative leaning democrats right well i have some specific ideas on that we started what we called a new build blitz this election cycle where anywhere from 10 to 20 of us went out door knocking and we went to new build areas and we knocked every single door and gave out the golden tickets which was a list of republican right. candidates and um, basically just talked to people because we don't know. Some of those people are so new. We don't know what they're voting, you know, which party they are, or if they vote or if they're Democrat or Republican. Or even, or what, if, even if they're registered. Right. So we went out to see if we could register people. Um, so I'd like to continue that in those new build areas quarterly, um, have an initiative to do that. And a couple other things are um, we need to engage the younger generation. We need to expand our technology. We're looking into getting a phone app. Um, expanding our social media influence and um, finding activities that PCs can do if they're still working full time or they have kids at home. They maybe can't dedicate quite as much time no. as you and I could in right. our, you know, we're not as age challenged as they are. <laughs> um, so getting the younger conservatives involved. Um, and then also, I think we need to reach out to, there's a lot of special interest groups in this area. Any group whose core values match the conservative values of the Republican Party, we should be welcoming them right. into the tent yep. and working with them so that we're all rowing in the same direction to elect those Republican yep. officials. Yeah. And again, uh, one of the things that I I think, and you're, you've touched on it, is re using uh, things like Turning Point USA. They're, they're all already here in Arizona uh, our huge chapters and reaching to our various universities. I think it's an untapped area because as we've been uh, been around the state, our uh, our folks tend to be more mature. Should we say yes. it that way? <laughs> and and quite candidly, we need to start reaching because I think there's an opportunity. I, I do believe there's a real opportunity. I think uh, the uh, the high school kid, even down to high school now, um, and the uh, and the college age kids. I think are looking at what's going on and, and really questioning whether or not uh, they're, uh, what they think about government, what they think mm -hmm. about conservatives is the way to go. Yeah, one of the outreach ideas I had was to develop kind of a stable, for lack of a better word, of um, Yavapai County GOP speakers who could go and give a 20 to 30 minute talk to an interested group. My, my hairdresser, very conservative, works full time. Um, doesn't have a lot of time to do this. She says, I, I vote conservative, but I feel like I don't know anything. I don't know how anything works. So we right. brainstormed. She'd like, you know, where do your tax dollars go? And how do the board of supervisors work? And, you know, how does a law become a law? And all of these things. She wants to learn about that. So if we had some speakers with some canned topics that could they could go out and talk to these small groups, yeah. that's a great way to get out into the community. And it doesn't even have to really be partisan. It's just teaching. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to the, the, the second topic, which is, you know, we, we talked about the, the uh, reach, uh, and uh, there's lots of moderates. There are conservative clubs that we've talked about uh, in the county, uh, all the way from Sedona, Camp Verde, Rimrock, uh, here, Chino Valley. There's all sorts of areas that, and they're disparate clubs. And one of the things that we need would like to hear from you is how do we get those clubs more engaged as a be as opposed to kind of being in silos, so to speak? Right. Well, we have a great resource here in Prescott called the Republican Women of Prescott. It's the right. largest group in the country, and we have a great uh, symbiotic relationship. You know, using volunteers from each organization to go back and forth and help each other out. Yeah. So, I would like to make use of our area directors. We have the five areas um, to 
find out what's going on in their communities that are more outlying than Prescott and Prescott Valley yep. um, so that we can reach out to those groups and offer that same kind of relationship, helping yeah. out with volunteers. And yeah, because now with the redistricting, with uh, the Verde Valley, you know, the other side of Mingus Mountain, Cottonwood, Sedona, mm -hmm. Camp Verde, is now part of this district, which right. it, it had not been before. Yeah. Um, what about communities outside, you know, in other words, outside of that area? Uh, can we, you know, since we are so conservative, one of the things I'm always concerned about with the all the new people moving in, I see an awful lot of California license plates. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping they've left their voting record mm -hmm. in California. The reason they're leaving is is for that. Uh, but I think engaging those people uh, and so forth. Well, I think that this venue that we're doing right here is probably a really good one. We yep. can uh, do some talks about, um, you know, where are your tax dollars spent and what are the ramifications of voting Democrat or leftist? Um, where Where's that money going? Do you really want to be paying it to those people? Yep. Um, I think we can do a lot of voter outreach with just educational platforms. Again, not necessarily partisan, but talking about what we believe in. Right. One thing you and I just talked about was the fact that we we have three Republicans now that are going to be representing us in the legislature. Yes. Um, one one uh, incumbent, uh, Quan, but two people, uh, Ken Bennett and mm -hmm. Selena Bliss. Ken, of course, has been involved in the Arizona legislature, but a while ago, Selena's brand new. How do you see the 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 county party kind of? Running, watching over the, the well, voting to make sure that uh, we're happy with our representatives and making sure we can communicate to people. Yeah, I, um, I, I firmly believe that leftist or even centrist voting from our elected officials is not to the benefit of our local jurisdiction or the state or the country. And America first, Arizona first, Yavapai first. Um, so, like I said, with those mini committees, I think that we have a lot of concerned citizens who at this point are ready to step up and be actively involved. You know, every bill that's sponsored or co-sponsored, every vote, every media soundbite, reporting that back to the precinct committee men and to the community at large so that we know what is going on down there. And if yeah. we don't like it, we say something right away. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's the part I think that we have not done as much. Uh, knowing the request to speak, uh, request to speak system, mm -hmm. the RTS system in uh, uh, that the legislature have, the the left has uh, has used that very, uh, very to the to their benefit, and I think we're ma we're make making some serious headway. But you're right; I think these these three individuals are our representatives, our senator, our two representatives, and we need to make sure that they are doing the will of the people. Yeah. Yep. I'd like to expand on the, the request to speak as well um, and actually or, organize some caravans that go down there on certain topics and actually don't just respect, you know, request to speak, but actually speak. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be a great thing to expand on as yep. well. I know the uh, Arizona Free Enterprise Club has a, what they call the City and Sun Lobbyist Program, which is something we probably want to look at. Well, listen, we're getting close to the end. Okay. Thank you very much for You're taking welcome. time to tell us about yourself and about your vision. Um, very quickly, give us, uh, you know, give us kind of a closing wrap, if you would. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm running for the county chair because I believe we need to start local. And I believe that I have the organizational chops from my business experience and just my networking throughout the figure skating world and everything that I've done to bring people together. We don't all have to agree 100% on every plank of the Republican Party, but we do need to all be rowing in the same direction. So I'm there to guide and set the pace and give ideas and help the grassroots achieve what we really want to achieve. Good. People want to learn more about you. How can they do that? They can give me a call or they can email me at Jana at JanaKating.com. Very good. Thanks again. We You're very welcome. It. Thank you very much for spending a, a short time with us, uh, with Jana. And uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more from her in the near future. Thank you.